On this special episode of Glow Trotting with Trey, I'd like to celebrate Clint Eastwood's 90th birthday today and share with you a story of the time that I got to hang out on the set of Trouble with the Curve with Clint Eastwood. I think you might enjoy it. Stay tuned. So today is Clint Eastwood's 90th birthday, and um, he is one of my favorite actors of all time, someone that I admire, someone that is a reason that I have gone after and become an actor on my own. Um, Clint Eastwood is just one of those old, cool movie stars that just had that charisma, that presence on film and um, I just wanted to honor him today with this video and share with you guys the story that I have of Clint Eastwood on a movie set. It happened a few years ago in Atlanta, Georgia. Clint Eastwood was in town filming Trouble with the Curve. He, uh, he actually has filmed his last three movies in Atlanta because we have a tax incentive and it's cheaper to make films in Georgia. But uh, so I couldn't pass this up. I had to get on that set somehow. So I, uh, I was in consideration to be in the stand-in of Justin Timberlake. He uh, was Clint's co-star in that movie. So I get on the set and I get to spend five days on this set at an old motel in Dawsonville, Georgia. It was unbelievable. I got to see Clint Eastwood from behind the scenes act. I, I watched him. I studied him because to me this was like a, a master acting class of my own because I've stolen everything I watched him do and implemented in my own career so far that I have as an actor. Clint Eastwood was just so... His sets, first of all, let's talk about his sets before I tell you the story. The same people work with him on every movie. So for the last 30 years the um, assistant director has always been his assistant director. The cameraman has always been his cameraman. The sound guys have been his sound guys. So it's a tight-knit community on Clint Eastwood's movie sets. And there's no fussing. There's no frustrations. Everybody knows their job, and they do their job. Clint Eastwood likes to work seven hours. Usually movie sets could go 12 to 14 hours movie day shootings on shooting days. Clint Eastwood, seven hours and is over. Every day, for five days, that's how it was. Nobody yelled on that set. They didn't, Clint Eastwood doesn't even call action. He does this. That means camera's rolling. And Clint doesn't say cut. He just says, all right, let's move on. <laughs> so that's stuff I learned and I, I've read up on that. He learned that from Rawhide his first ever television role, first ever acting role, I believe. And uh, he just took that from what he learned on that big TV show, Rawhide. So I just thought that was cool, but it's the best set that I've ever been a part of, that I ever witnessed. And um, you know, if I achieve my dreams and become a director and actor as well, have my own productions, which I already do, that's how I run my stuff. Just a friendly atmosphere. Let's do our thing. Let's create some great movie magic. And uh, let's go home. But anyhow, so I... One day on the set, I went to, uh, to eat at a catering. And I mean, we had all kind of great food on Clint Eastwood's set. So I had my hands full. I had a plate in one hand and a um, drink in the other. And on the sets, you have lunch boxes, which are like trailers that can expand out and you can put tables and chairs inside the lunch box. So there were about three stairs you had to walk up in to get into the lunch box, and the door was closed. So I naturally bent over and put down my uh, plate, and I noticed the door opening. So I said, thank you. And I look up, and Clint Eastwood is standing there 
with a smile on his face because I, I guess he thought, I'm about to shock this young guy. And he's holding the door open for me. Oh, thanks, Mr. Eastwood. I appreciate that, I believe is what I said to him. And I thought to myself, I am the only person in the entire world right now in this moment, on this day, that Clint Eastwood is holding the door open for. So that's my first story there, Clint Eastwood. Now it gets better. It definitely gets better. So every morning he'd come on set and he would come over and how you fellas do, and he, he used fellas a lot, which is for his age group, I noticed because my granddad would say the same thing, and my granddad was born 12 days after Clint Eastwood. I mean, my granddad's birthday is on June the 11th, and Clint Eastwood's on today, the 31st of May. So, and they're both, my granddad would have turned, will turn 90 next week on the 11th if he was still here. So they're in that same little age group, and I can see how those guys of that age group, how they spoke and carried themselves. I mean, they were true men. They were real, real men. So a day or two later on the set for lunch, I walk up into the lunchbox, and there Clint Eastwood and the director, Clint was not directing Trouble with a Curve. He was allowing his assistant director to direct his first movie. So Clint was just being an actor. So I saw Clint Eastwood sitting at that table, and it popped in my head. Trey, you may never get this opportunity ever again in your life. You may need to take it. So guess what I did? I scooted in. Now, I did not put my plate down directly beside Clint. I put my plate down two chairs over from Clint Eastwood. And I remember when I was sitting down, I looked at him. And he looked over at me and he kind of just nodded and smiled at me. Probably thinking, man, this, this guy has some, you know, galls to sit right next to me like this. So my friend that was also on set came in and he saw me sit right there at that head table with Clint Eastwood. So guess what he did? He put his tray directly across from me from that table. And we sat there and chatted with Clint Eastwood and the director and the... Uh, camera guy of that movie, the photo director of photography of that movie, and Clint's um, bodyguard, Chuck, which was a great guy. And I heard Clint talk about Gran Torino and that car. He really looked like that car in Gran Torino. And I heard Clint talk about the first ever Ferrari that he ever bought in the 60s when he was on Rawhide. He said he picked it up and dro drove it across the Mexican um, border into California. And he said he got he was stopped there at customs, and the guys could not believe the leather seats. They had never seen leather seats before. I remember him telling that story. He talked about some women and stuff like that. It was unbelievable. The funny thing that I did, friends, when I was sitting there eating, Clint sitting directly right beside me, just one space over. Nobody, nobody the whole time sat between us. How great is that? I recited the Dirty Harry monologue, because I, I learned that. So what are you thinking? Did I fire five shots or six? Hmm. Well, to tell you the truth with all this excitement going on, I kind of lost count myself. But being here that this is a 44 Magnum and the most powerful handgun in this world, and it would blow your head clean off, you've got to ask yourself a question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? <laughs> and I recited that monologue as I was looking at Clint Eastwood, and it just doesn't get any better in my life than that. So that was my story of my time on the set with Clint Eastwood. I, I learned so much. I watched him, and he was just a nice guy, and he was in shape. He was like 84, 83 or 84 at this point. He's 90 today. Still here with us. He was in great shape, worked out every morning, and I could just tell about how he walked around and stuff in his body that he was going to be with us. He's going to be with us a long time. He's making 100. He's making 100. He's a national treasure. So I wanted to share this story with you guys and show you these pictures that I took on the set with Clint Eastwood. And I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I thought you guys might like to see this. I had to get his autograph, of course. And, um, you know, it's not too professional to ask guys that you work with that are 
big celebrities like that to get their autograph. But after I worked, I made sure I asked. Couldn't pass it up. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Check that out. Clint Eastwood signed Gran Torino to me. Doesn't get any better, right? <laughs> it's one of, one of my favorite movies of his as well, Gran Torino. I have a good story about that one, but I can't tell you guys. <laughs> and then, um, check this one out. He signed that picture. I actually, um, I actually was behind the camera watching them film this scene. That was at that old motel I told you about that I worked with Clint Eastwood at in Dawsonville, Georgia. So I made sure that uh, later on when I was around that I took this picture and got autographed. But check that out. So what is your favorite Clint Eastwood movie? Comment below and let me know. My favorite one? Probably gonna be surprising to you. It's the first one that he ever directed in 1970. Play Misty for me. It's like a thriller movie. And I, I just really, it, it was shot in Carmel, uh, California, where Clint Eastwood lives. Maybe I'll be there and film one day for you guys. But it's one of my favorites. Play Misty for me. If you've never seen it, today on his 90th birthday, watch it. Also, of course, I love Dirty Harry. And I love um, the good, the bad, the ugly. And Space Cowboys. Because Space Cowboys also stars my other favorite, James Gardner. So having Clint Eastwood and James Gardner on set in Space Cowboys together, I, just, I love that. They were on Maverick one episode too, which is pretty cool. So yeah, let me know what your favorite Clint Eastwood movie is by commenting below. Hey, and I love Rawhide. Can't go wrong with Rowdy Yates. So as you can see, I am a big Clint Eastwood fan, and I hope you enjoyed this video. And to Clint Eastwood, if you see this, Happy birthday from Trey. Till next time, friends, make my day. Subscribe to Glow Trotting with Trey. It's free, doesn't cost you a thing, and you stay updated with every new video that I upload, which is once every week, plus special ones like today. Till next time, I'll see you down the road. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.